now the full picture and the presentation. Okay, so that's the start of her presentation where she is uh, informing us the subject that's reinventing, reinventing the bamboo in our culture um, through the design. So, con la otra imagen, Carolina. So, uh, right now, the second image is uh, in the house, a tourist destination that they built um, the whole complex here in Colombia. It's a 15 hectares complex. This is one of the houses uh, of for tourist application, tourism applications, and it's. Um, She's communicating that architecture is ecologic, bioclimatic, and sustainable. And that's one of the features of bamboo or guadua. Uh, guadua is the na Indian native name of this material. Colombian Indians natives gave to this uh, material this name, guadua. So for the rest of the world, it's known as bamboo, but in Colombia and Ecuador and in Venezuela, the name is Guadua. Carolina. Bueno, eh, quisiera leer una frase de Álvaro Alto que yo pues tengo muy en cuenta al desarrollar mis proyectos. Dice la arquitectura apropiada no solo busca la sustentabilidad ecológica, sino también económica y cultural. Es algo que para mí es muy, muy importante en todos los proyectos que yo desarrollo. Wow, she, she's, um, she's communicating that uh, Álvaro Alto uh, says in this uh, phrase that architecture, appropriate architecture, not only looks for ecologic sustainability, but as well for with for economy and culture, and that's something that she always keep in, keeps in mind when she's working or starting, uh, whenever she's starting any project or design. Carolina. Bueno, eh, ahí están viendo la otra presentación, ¿verdad? La otra sí. diapositiva. Bueno, la, la nueva. A veces la arquitectura contemporánea busca eh, ser is, eh, insistente en responder a moda, a estética, a muchos elementos que para mí no son lo más importante, sin decir que, que sean primordiales. Pero lo más importante es que sea una arquitectura holística en donde se tengan en cuenta también asoleación, iluminación, ventilación y el uso adecuado principalmente de los materiales. Por eso en mis obras yo escogí como material protagónico el bambú y principalmente bambú guado. Ok. Um, sometimes architecture, uh, contemporary architecture, arch architecture uh, looks with a very important insistence to respond to mode or to to fashion or to aesthetic uh, patterns, uh, leaving aside concepts more subtle uh, and logics in order to conceive uh, an uh, space. Sometimes um, issues such as uh, lightning, illumination, ventilation, and the uh, adequate use of materials is not uh, given the importance it should have. Carolina. Eh, en 1980 surge el concepto de desarrollo sostenible que imagino todos conocen. Y eh, para este entonces era importante tener en cuenta el ciclo de vida de los materiales, el desarrollo de esos materiales y la reducción de las cantidades de materiales y energía que se utilizaran para desarrollar los diferentes eh, proyectos constructivos. Y es por esto que también eh, me llama la atención el uso del bambú. Y lo, lo mostraré en las diapositivas siguientes. 
well, in 1980s, the arises the new concept of um, sustainable development based in three principles, in three uh, main issues, which are the analysis of the cycle of life of raw materials, the development in use of raw, mater raw materials and sustainable energies, the reductions of the quantities of materials and the energy used in the extra extractions of natural resources, its exploitation and the destruction or the recycling of uh, all the, the residuals. Uh, this has been um, gaining much more importance. And this is why Carolina, she is trying to develop a new concept with having all these ideas in her work. Carolina. Eh, para mí la cultura de la Guadua es un patrimonio que está vivo entre nosotros. Eh, conserva gran parte de la sabiduría de los, ante, de los antepasados. Y no se trata de repetir la construcción del pasado, sino de reinterpretar todo lo que nuestras eh, personas anteriores a nosotros eh, hicieron para generar y crear arquitectura más respetuosa con eh, necesidades actuales y con diseños también actuales. So, Guadua culture, uh, it's a, an a heritage which is uh, alive in our society. It um, concerns a great part of the, our ancestors' uh, uh, culture, and uh, it's not about repeating the constructions made in the past. It's about the respect and the reinterpretation re we can have of these materials and their constructions. It's about understanding and learning the way these ancient constructors uh, make it possible to resolve the problems of adaptation to nature in each and every region of our country and continent. Because this, it, this was used by our natives, by our Indians, by our uh, ancestors. So um, starting with all these background and all this knowledge sometimes uh, forgotten or kept aside it's important to create an architecture more respectful with our environment and with our inhabitants carolina Usamos la guadua como elemento protagónico porque no es un beneficio unipersonal, es un beneficio um, social. También porque eh, cada vez que eh, conocemos más el bambú, queremos aplicarlo y poder profundizar y crear nuevas cosas. So, uh, we use guadua as an element as a protagonic element, uh, no, not as a unipersonal benefit. It's a global benefit for the society. Guadua is uh, like a labyrinth because it's heightened and it is complex, but it provides lots of opportunities every, every time someone studies each and every part of the of the material, then it's uh, a new initiation of a new path or a new way, a pathway to discover all the advantages of this material that are to be uh, taken part of it. Hello, 
Carolina. Eh, eh, cuando hablo de reinterpretar arquitectura, eh, me refiero eh, aquí eh, localizar, pues he eh, traído algunas fotos de proyectos anteriores eh, en donde la gente utilizaba la arquitectura vernácula, las construcciones vernáculas, y a partir de eso es que empecé a crear nuevos diseños. So, when she talks about reinterpretation re of uh, our ancient technology, it's about using their techniques and the way they, they conceive the use of the guadua for their structures and their projects. So having and keeping in mind all the knowledge and the techniques they had to create their, in, their, their houses and all the sites they live in, uh, it's a, a, a um, complete study they've made in order to propose new ways of doing it. Carolina. Quiere decir que en los edificios, en los proyectos que desarrollamos para nosotros es importante generar espacios abiertos y saludables, tener un control de la temperatura de manera natural, eh, hacer muy eficiente el uso de energía y agua y eh, tener una alta medición eh, y espacios interiores eh, confortables. So um, it means that uh, in all their projects and in all their works, it is very important to have big and open and healthy uh, spaces to keep control of the <clears throat> temperature and uh, in a natural way to have uh, an efficient way of using energy and water and to keep a high quality of the of the interior in um uh environment environmental point of view carolina y eh, nuestras cosas carolina te está pidiendo te está pidiendo ay se perdió el chat te estaban pidiendo, hay que mirar el chat porque te están haciendo preguntas en el chat acerca de, de la decoración de bambú, de las decoraciones en las paredes en bambú. No sé si quieras responder a todas las preguntas al final o qué quieras hacer. Pero digamos que, sí, digamos que las, las preguntas las vamos a responder al final. Okay, Carolina is informing that all questions, she'll be answering all your questions at the end of her presentation. Eh, bueno, en esta parte digo que para los proyectos es importante eh, tener impacto y beneficios globales con el bambú. Eh, esto quiere decir que nosotros hacemos construcciones saludables, que generamos empleo y oportunidades que además eh, lo más importante también de todo esto es dar a conocer nuestra cultura. Entonces eso es, eh, digamos, como el resumen de lo que nosotros pretendemos con nuestros proyectos. Ok. Um, so, um, the, her aim is to propose a new way of working with bambú or with guadua. It's um, to have a positive big impact uh, in her in the communities and in a global way. Uh, so she proposing healthy uh, and simple constructions in order to generate uh, work opportunities and in order to give um, to promote our culture outside Colombia. Carolina. 
Eh, algo de lo que nos llama muchísimo la atención es precisamente cómo eh, se gasta poca energía para la construcción de estos proyectos. Entonces, eh, el uso del, del, del bambú genera empleo desde su mismo corte hasta todo su proceso eh, para llevar la culminación eh, una vivienda. Y esto eh, la gente en nuestro país lo valora muchísimo. Okay, so one of the important features of this material uh, is that it um, uses a very low impact of energy. It's, uh, it saves a lot of energy. And as you may see in the images she's proposing, that uh, it it's giving a lot of works, a lot of jobs are created by these materials from the very moment it is planted to the moment it's cut and the treatment is made to have this material applied in construction. Carolina. Eh, en estas fotos podemos ver eh, el paisaje de lo que hace parte en los guaduales, los diferentes rodales en donde están los guaduales y también eh, cómo se, se va cortando, cómo se saca del sitio, cómo se elabora la esterilla de guadua hasta empezar a armar las estructuras eh, de diferente manera dependiendo de las construcciones que se vayan a desarrollar. Well, in this, um, in this uh, different pictures, Carolina is presenting you the, all the guadua since its plantation, the way it's used, the landscape, the way it's uh, processed, the way it's cut, and the way it started to be um, uh, linked uh, as a material in a, like a handicraft use. In a, it's very it's handmade, has makes, it uses a lot of uh, hand and uh, man work until the end of it's used to construct uh, all the structure of the, of the houses and the projects she makes. Carolina. Eh, aquí seguimos viendo todo el proceso y las diferentes técnicas que manejamos. Eh, trabajamos alambre y eh, yute para muchas veces hacer paredes. Esto lo denominamos tendinoso o con esterilla de Perdóname, guano. aquí te interrumpo y de pronto me, me lo vuelves a repetir porque es que esas palabras no tienen traducción, ni, ni el tendinoso, ni... So, pues, uh, 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 see, okay. So this is a very important part of her job because uh, she is using uh, ancestral, uh, our ancestor in the native ancestor technique of construction. So it uses uh, the this raw material, but as well it she uses um, like strings and jute which is um, nature and natural. It's, it's, uh, it's shown in the central pictures. It's, um, it's like a textile made of um, a plant uh, that's found in Colombia. And this, as you may see in the different pictures, there is a string that goes around the guadua or bamboo plant. Then in the second line, you'll see that this string is going from one side to another. And then this material, which is a sort of a textile made of a plant called in Colombia jute, it's, it's going to pass side by side to, to the, by, by the string in order to create the wall, the base of a wall. It's a, a, a natural technique used in Colombia. Sigue, Carolina. Sí, aquí tenemos ejemplo de la estructura de una de las viviendas desarrolladas con, eh, totalmente en guadua, eh, guadua rolliza y, es, y esterilla de guadua. 
Okay, so uh, this picture shows the way uh, our native Indians used to you used to employ the guadua material. Uh, the 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 walls you see are constructed uh, with um, a technique called esterilla. So they the, um, the guadua is opened and then uh, it's go side by side uh, in order to create these sort of walls, which are the base for the for all the construction of the houses. Um, también aquí Mora, eh, mostramos diferentes formas de explorar el material, la resistencia y la flexibilidad. So here, uh, this photo shows different ways of um, exploring the adaptability and flexibility of the material in order to create new forms and new structures. It's resistance, it's, fle it's uh, flexibility, and all the features this material has. Y aquí ya mostramos eh, un ejemplo de un proyecto de 100 viviendas, eh, un proyecto residencial turístico donde hay 100 viviendas y eh, todo lo que mostramos anteriormente eh, aquí ya está terminado. Sí. Now, the, this, um, this picture... Uh, it's um, the, of a complex they made. It, uh, it, um, contain, it has uh, 100 houses uh, having um, either a residential or a tourist application for tourism. And um, this project was made based in all the techniques she showed in her previous photos. Eh, otra foto del proyecto en donde se muestran las vías y la diferente eh, orientación de las viviendas para tener en cuenta soleación, ventilación y visuales. So this uh, is another um, photo of the complete complex um, in order to show you, to you the way um, it was conceived uh, with the with the, the paths and the plan, because um, the orientation of the sun, the lightning, uh, the wind, uh, and all these techniques in order to save energy and to have as well um, a bioclimatic application. Sigue, Carolina. Aquí vemos las diferentes características de, del proyecto en donde se buscó que tuviera una zona central como pulmón, eh, zona de juegos, parques y toda la parte urbana eh, se tuvo en cuenta la parte bioclimática. Ok, so um, this, um, this is the, the main, um, this this it, it shows the main concepts uh, that uh, were uh, included in order to create this project. They sh they wanted to have the the sauna, the central area as um, a long, uh, and uh, they wanted to have um, sport areas. They wanted to have as well parks as well, um, fruit trees around the complex. They wanted to have um, multi applications, uh, spaces, at uh, open space, uh, spaces, and they wanted to develop areas for the, the flowers, for the complete uh, vegetations and for animals. Um, also, they wanted to, con to have a conjunction uh, played by, by the vegetation and the water that will co contribute to give aeration to the complete area. Eh, en, esta, en estas imágenes mostramos cómo 
todas las, las construcciones que se desarrollaron al interior del proyecto fueron elaboradas con bambú, eh, desde capillas, eh, zona de juegos, eh, los campamentos para guardar los materiales, eh, el acceso, en fin, y eh, las viviendas también. So in this image, she shows the different uh, sort of constructions that were made in the project that were all made in Guadua, such as um, the, the chapel, such as the houses, the entrance, uh, the, uh, the playing grounds areas, the, also the warehouses, and all they apply to all sites uh, the this material and different ways of um, having it in the design and in the construction. Eh, sigue Carolina. Eh, esta ya es la construcción terminada de todo lo que vimos desde el proceso eh, anterior. Y aquí eh, vemos, por ejemplo, como la carpintería, las persianas, la cubierta, las placas de entrepiso, todo es desarrollado eh, a partir de bambú guado. So, uh, this, um, this picture shows one of the houses uh, at the finished project. So, as you will see, the cover, the, the stairs, the, the doors, the windows, everything is made out of Guadua, having um, all these ancestor techniques applied, but in, um, in a modern way. So reinterpreting the, the background we have in Colombia. Eh, eh, las maquetas explican el concepto bioclimático de la vivienda en donde se trabajó el efecto chimenea, eh, la curvatura de las cubiertas para protegerse del sol y eh, el separar el área social del área privada por espacios abiertos para tener ventilación cruzada. Eh, Carolina, eh, esto es importante y va ah, muchos conceptos. Me lo vas diciendo pedacito por pedacito porque se me olvida. Bueno, okay. entonces, eh, curvatura de cubiertas para protegerse del sol. So, the, in this, um, in this uh, maquette, she's showing the different um, aspects she was uh, prioritizing because she found it they were very important. So <clears throat> la first one is the uh, curve or oh, es la cobertura de cubierta, ¿cierto? The, co sí. Sí. the coverage curve in order to have a bioclimatic and, uh, and to protect from the sunshine, the, the construction. Bueno, ahora sigue. La ubicación de la piscina para refrescar porque es en un, eh, en un sitio muy cálido. So, the, as you may, may see, the swimming pool is a key factor because it will refresh the complete house since uh, the, the place where the project is located is very, has always very um, important temperatures. It's a hot place. ¿Qué más sigue? Efecto chimenea para eh, ventilar la vivienda al interior. El aire caliente sube. So it has a chimney or would you say far place effect so that it, um, refreshes with the circulation, the, the house at the interior. Bueno, yo creo que eh, mostramos otros detalles ya eh, en las fotos y a nivel interior, porque pues el tiempo es corto y no quiero tampoco como que se canse. 
Okay, so um, she says that she will just uh, show another details because, well, the, the time is short and they won't, she doesn't want to have you tired about all your, her explanations. So, into si quieres. Sí, entonces aquí detalles de ventilación eh, por medio de las, de las persianas que se hacen con latas de guadua. Eh, todo se hace de manera manual y artesanal. Sí, so these are details of the um, ventilation uh, uh, so that the air can, can go through the guadua tissue. It's, um, it's completely handmade. It's um, really an artisanal work. Uh, it's made, uh, uh, it's made, uh, it, it employs a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of, uh, um, Artesanal? Sí, a lot of handicraft, a lot of handicraft work. Eh, la vegetación también es muy importante en la parte paisajística y para refrescar los ambientes. So vegetation is also very important in the landscape concept, but as well to refresh all the, um, the atmospheres, uh, all the atmosphere. El trabajo interior eh, también es importante porque para mí los detalles eh, deben ser especiales de acuerdo a cada, a los usuarios que van a habitar la vivienda. So the interior work is very important as well for her, but it goes um, according to the different persons that are um, going to inhabit the, 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 the house. So for each uh, one of the, let's say customers, she planted, she proposes different atmospheres and different uh, applications. Carolina. Eh, eh, ventanales grandes y dobles alturas también eh, se utilizan en las viviendas. So, um, big windows and open spaces are used in the houses. Y ya entramos a un segundo proyecto que es en clima frío. Y las características en esta construcción, pues ya cambian muchísimo con respecto a, a, al proyecto anterior. So, um, this is a, a project made in another area of Colombia where um, there is not such a, a warm uh, temperature, but it's uh, in a cool cool place. So different design, different elements are used in order to keep some, uh, some uh, better temperature in the, in the house. This is the first floor. In, uh, in this En este proyecto ya utilizo el efecto invernadero para buscar calentar la vivienda de manera natural. So in this project she she uses the the se me olvidó invernadero the the efecto the effect the the effect the cómo es el en, efecto invernadero Efecto invernadero es no es greenhouse effect in order to keep warm the house and this is the the technique she uses to construct the walls as uh, um I well that's a technique inspired in our uh, ancestors. Uh, works so it as you as she it, as the image uh, explains it goes with uh, strings and jute 
which uh, I said is a fabric made by na natives in Colombia. También utilizo piedra que hay en la región y la utilizo negra para captar eh, más el calor y eh, se hacen dentro de las paredes, se pone junco. Se okay. puede decir junco porque eso es un material nuestro. Pero el junco también es un material nuestro, eso no, eso no, no tiene. Well, she, in the, well, in this photo you can appreciate she uses a uh, different sort of uh, stones uh, that she is available. Vicky. Dice, no, es que hay una pregunta que, es, que están haciendo que si en esta vivienda eh, se utiliza alguna columna para hacer un, un reforzamiento de la estructura. Se, se utilizan con guadua. Ah, okay. Y en las Ostro... partes, eh, pero muy escasas, eh, se utiliza alguna en concreto, pero creo que eh, básicamente estas todas son en guadua. Okay, well, um, we just asked about the, the question we had. So the, all the structure is made in Guadua columns and all the, the, the structures of the house were made in Guadua. Uh, so the stones she proposes are um, of the area and with the stones are used in order to apply or give some warm to the house. And also um, another material, which is a native material as well of South America. You, ma you it's very, very peculiar of uh, Machu Picchu you, and, and, and uh, also very peculiar of the, um, es que se llama? the Titicaca Lake and all lakes in, in, the, in our area. It's called Junco. It's um, <clears throat> Junco. Um, it's a it's a plant that uh, that provides uh, it's uh, that provides a uh, warm and uh, it's it's um it's very easy and manual to use and uh, for these sort of constructions uh, it's used uh, because of the resistance it has and the maniability it has. Eh, aquí vemos diferentes formas de usar nuevamente el bambú eh, lo, en rodajas. Lo que sobra yo lo utilizo para eh, anas, barandas, eh, eh, ciertos entretejidos y cubiertas para jugar con luz y sombra. Ok, so in this, uh, in these photos you will see that all the waste of the material is employed by her in order to create some um, decorative walls. And um, you may see that you have uh, little circles, little bamboo circles creating the walls. You have as well lamps, you have details of decoration in the different patterns. Busco generar el menor desperdicio posible y tratar de aprovechar todos esos elementos que a veces pueden eh, ser eh, basura para, para otras personas para generar lámparas, accesorios o elementos decorativos. Ya, yeah. uh, I said uh, she uses, she doesn't like to have waste. All the, the ways she has, she uses for her, for decoration, for lamps, for, for walls, in order to create and apply it to the, to the house, to the different parts of the house. Eh, esta es una de los detalles de la cubierta, en donde a pesar que es Teja de barro plana eh, y esas dos aguas, yo lo que busco es que sea de una manera curva para generar un espacio interior más agradable. Well, this is some detail of the cover of the of the house. So um, uh, she uses uh, the the 
native uh, tale, Spanish tales, but um, she it creates a carve, carve, um, carve covers uh, in order to have a more uh, simple and a more decorative uh, proposal. Okay. Esto, 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 ok. Quedó bien. Eh, es, es eh, otra, otra imagen donde se muestran las diferentes formas de utilizar el bambú, eh, para, ya sea para decorar como estructura o como espacio para generar un ambiente diferente interior. Okay, so it's uh, yet an, another picture showing all the different ways she you, she proposes to use the bamboo in order to generate um, simple and um, very creative spaces, such in the either in the ceiling as in the in other decoration aspects, as well in the. You may see all details made out of bamboo water. Eh, voy a pasar rápidamente las imágenes porque me preocupa el tiempo y pues básicamente es para mostrar eh, pues cómo se utiliza en los diferentes ambientes el bambú. Okay, she now she's gonna pass lot of images uh, because she's uh, a little. Um, a little worried about the time left. So, but she wants to share with you all the different ways she she uses Guadua to create different atmospheres. Eh, aquí se muestra cómo se utilizó en barandas eh, y pues nuevamente en placas, ventanas. So here it shows it in a veranda, uh, also in the in the ceiling, in the as well uh, in the in the walls, uh, in the in the windows, and in all decorat decorative details. Um, aquí llama la atención la lámpara que también fue desarrollada con elementos sobrantes del proceso constructivo. ¿Qué cosa? No te entendí. La la, que, la, la lámpara, la lámpara que está en la mitad. Ah, sí, sí. So, there's um, a lamp, a detail of a lamp that comes out of the ceiling. It was, it was way, made as well of waste of the, waste of the process of the construction pro process. So, it was used as... Y voy a mostrarles un video desde que llega el bambú a la obra, cómo es el proceso constructivo. Ok, so she shares this video in order to show to you the constructive process. Eh, es importante las uniones, cómo hacemos las cubiertas y los materiales que conjugamos diferentes técnicas. Que... So that she shows that they shares the, the covers, the techniques, the, the finishings.
Bueno, se eh, puede preguntar si eh, dejamos acá o si más información, pero me preocupa que hay otro, eh, hay el arquitecto que sigue, entonces no quiero como eh, afectar. Están haciendo la pregunta de cuál es el material que se usa para el wall panel, para la, para la, la, la para el tendinoso, porque están, eh, no sé si quieras mostrarle nuevamente el tendinoso, que pues eso es hecho, eso se hace, me dices, es de, de alambre, alambre, yute y, y, y mortero. Ajá, yute y mortero. Sí. Well, for the wall, of the for the paneling it's um it's a it's a technique that's called tendinoso it comes out of a string first thing uh, they do is to pass string from uh, from left to right left to right and then afterwards they put a fabric called made out of yute which is a um, native uh, this fabric is made out by uh, our natives is a, a native fabric and afterwards there is a uh, the the mortar creating the applied to it on by hand and then you get the wall the finish wall uh, decirles que 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 esta ¿Tú tienes una de... foto más detallada del del tendinoso Sí, estaba aquí adelante. Sí, este es el tendinoso. Y ahí se muestra eh, el alambre, el yute y cómo va el mortero. So, this, um, this is the material employed for the, for, the, for the wall. So, as you see, they have, they create a structure made out of guadua. That's the, the rectangle you see. And afterwards, the string is passed from one side to other, the other. Fa then the, the fabric called yute, uh, which is made of a South American plant, uh, is passed uh, and, uh, and put in with the strings. And afterwards, the mortar is applied so that you get the wall. That's uh, basically uh, a native Indian technique. Vicky, preguntemos si, si seguimos o si ya pasamos rápidamente estas y pasamos a preguntas o qué hacemos. Estas son otras, otros proyectos que estos ya son los presentes, los que se están haciendo actualmente. Y pues nada, este es el final, es decir, que, eh, que para mí eh, diseñar con bambú es, es un sueño, es, es, me permite soñar, me permite eh, trabajar todo lo que, lo que mi mente quiere crear y llevar a la realidad, eh, porque es un material flexible, liviano, económico, resistente y que además me reta cada día a tratar de hacer eh, nuevos diseños y descubrir nuevos elementos para crear nuevas cosas. Oh, well, finally, uh, Carolina uh, would like to say that she loves working with bamboo or with guadua because it's a it's a material that allows her her to have dreams. Uh, to create uh, a lot of things because it's a very, very flexible, light and resistant, but as well, it's, uh, it's um, let's say, quite of cheap material in our country. And, uh, but uh, in addition, it gives her the opportunity to learn uh, a lot from from the environment and from our local workers. Uh, it's a plant that um, provides her 
a lot of opportunities to create, to, to transform, and uh, to allow her to see life in a different point of view, um, both in a, from the social, the integration, the culture, and the creation. So um, I have not seen the chat yet uh, in order to, to, to ask Carolina to respond to the different questions you have proposed. So I, uh, I'd like to see the chat. Está, está haciendo, espérate, estoy revisando el chat. A ver si, uh, si hay más preguntas. Um, aquí están diciendo que si puedes tomar preguntas, pero no veo. Hay una pregunta que dice que si la columna en el primer proyecto... Es, si es hecha de RCC, que es RCC, no sé, o si no contiene... Qué... ¿Ah? No sé qué es RCC. Um, there is a question made by SC where um, asking if the column in the first project appears to be made out of RCC. Uh, is there... Ah, we don't know what's RCC. Can someone tell us in the chat what's RCC so that Carolina can answer the question? What RCC, RCC stands for? Yeah, reinforced, reinforced concrete. Ah, sí, es de concreto reforzado. Eh, en el primer proyecto. En el sí, primer proyecto. imagino que la, la casa de Dinastía del Sol fue lo primero que pusiste. Sí. La casa de Dinastía del Sol, ahí, eh, o sea, si ellos miran, está toda hecha en estructura. Miren, esta es la casa de Dinastía del Sol y no tiene columnas en concreto. Uh, so. Que le de la casa. So no response is that uh, there's no RCC at all. It's all made out of Guadua. Miren, aquí está el esqueleto de la casa. Ese es el esqueleto de esta casa ya terminada. O sea, esta so this misma... is the skeleton of the house. There's no RCC at all in the structure. All is made of Guadua. Y terminada se ve así. O sea, yo lo que busco es que esa es la misma casa. Lo que busco es que eh, no se sature de, de bambú la vista, sino que trato de generar un equilibrio en la, ya en el acabado final. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, uh, um... Carolina insists everything is made out of bamboo, but uh, at the end, because of the design, she tries to propose a combination um, of, uh, of uh, finishing. So the walls are presented in another way, but everything is made out of bamboo. Tendrán más, pre más preguntas? Si tienen más en el chat, espérate, <risa> espérate, que si el, si el, que si el ceiling, que si el techo está hecho con plaster o si lo haces, lo haces de plaster, plaster es con cemento, ¿verdad? O lo haces, tú lo haces con tapia o con cemento. Con cemento, pero también se puede hacer con tapia y encima va teja de barro plana. Oh, my goodness. Bueno, eh, it, the ceiling is, can be made out of plastic. The finish can be made out of plaster. But uh, there is another ancestral technique 
uh, that's called tapia and it's made out of um como se dice tierra of a uh, roma of um ahora no encuentro tierra 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 trágame of uh, eh, arcilla 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 pero arcilla como se dice arcilla arcilla pues decirles es, que no. es es me such a type of sand found uh, in sand uh, and uh, mud it's it's a sort of sand and mud uh worked by hand hay un momentico okay yeah so it's mud plaster uh uh, modified mud plaster. Yeah, modified mud plaster. Yeah, great. And then what is the flooring material for the roof slab? Eh, que si es un material que se puede que para el, para las inundaciones que pasa con las inundaciones si se daña el material con el agua. No, interiormente es con arcilla, pero afuera es en teja de barro, pero eso es cocido. La teja de barro es cocida en, en hornos. Ok, so the mud uh, tiles go into uh, ovens. And so it's, it's very dry and very resistant. And so the outside of the house, yes, it's made out of a plaster, but in the inside finishing of the house, she is having tapia, which is the native material made out of mud. And it's handmade. So it's uh, really applied by hand in the wall. Es no. muy bueno, o sea, no le pasa nada. Es, es muy buena para las lluvias y, y con el sol no se raja, no le pasa nada. It's very good. Uh, I mean, if for rain, it's very resistant to sun. It's very resistant to rain. To rain. Um, it's very cheap, and <laughs> very sustainable. Uh, because it's basically made out of, man, of mud and it's completely handmade. An ecology. As, por eso, very ecology. Uh -huh. Espérate a ver. Si, es que hay más preguntas. Espérate a ver, porque es que respondemos una y nos mandan otra. Espérate a ver. Ay, me preocupa el tiempo. Preguntamos si, si, si hay tiempo para más preguntas. Uh, Carolina is asking if it's okay to uh, be answering more questions. If you have enough time, it's okay to, to keep going on. No quiero comentar al otro expositor. There are, there are no questions, it seems, but at the same time, Carolina, your presentation and your uh, you know, verbal uh, support was really very apt and we understood, we really enjoyed your presentation. It was, was you know, a wonderful presentation. <clears throat> you really took a deep, in, a, a deep into the uh, ancestral knowledge and technology techniques our ancestors developed and also listening to the dictates of the sustainable development. You tried to uh, show us as to how uh, you have explored the uh, versatility of the uh, bamboo uh, through your projects and that too through the de detailing, you know. You have used it as an element of uh, visual impression. You also used it as for all the functional needs, uh, the uh, temperature, humidity, uh, shade, glare, etc. And it was a beautiful display. We really enjoyed. The language did not matter at all. But at the same time, I, I must congratulate your interpreter 
who was also very well, well conversed with the vocabulary and so we could interpret we could understand the presentation it was a lovely presentation carolina we thank both of you for sharing your presentation and sharing your views thank you once again thank you very much Dice, te agradecen, si entendiste, te agradecen toda tu presentación, que es un trabajo hermoso, una grandiosa, hermosa presentación, que pues están impresionados con tu trabajo, que les gusta mucho. Muchísimas gracias, fue un gran gusto poder compartir eh, lo, que, lo que desarrollamos aquí en Colombia. Y pues qué rico saber de todo, pues qué interesante saber de todos ustedes y del trabajo que, que hacen. Eh, yo sigo a muchos en, en Facebook y también he visto los trabajos eh, de varios porque también eh, hacen mm, proyectos muy, muy interesantes. She wants to thank everybody and uh, it's been a pleasure and uh, an honor of having the, the opportunity to explain and present her work to you because she's also been um, very attracted and very interested for all your work and for the important uh, projects you have done and that she keeps consulting and up updating herself in order to learn more about this uh, construction technique. And uh, you know, we take this opportunity uh, to invite you to India. Please come down to India sometime and you know, also uh, have a glimpse of the works done by the Indian architects in the bamboo sector. We invite you. So with this, uh, once again, I thank Carolina and her partner for the presentation. And now we move on to the next presentation. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Hemang Mistri. Okay, Carolina, Anna. te agradecen y el para el nuevo ya. Thank you so much to you and I'm going to leave you. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, thank you. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Carolina. Muchas gracias, Victoria. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Thank you, Carolina. Thank you, gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky. Okay, thank you. You all come. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, bye. <clears throat> Now we move on to the next presentation, and that is uh, our own friend Hemang Bistri, who is a part of our team also. And he has been, uh, you know, he's an architect from Surat and he did his master's in urban design from Sept Ahmedabad. Uh, and ever since then, that is since last 15 years, he has been practicing architecture and urban design. Friends, let me tell you, Hemang, I know of, uh, though a very, uh, you know, what you call very recent uh, friendship we developed. However, I found Hemang to be a very passionate uh, bamboo lover, bamboo enthusiast. He has, he dreams bamboo, you know, he dreams bamboo and tries to manifest his ideas and dreams into reality through the architecture and urban design projects he deals with. Uh, he, in fact, really wishes to shape the human life through the uh, in a molding of bamboo in different scales. And that is what he dreams of. I would definitely love to... Uh, uh, he is now, uh, you know, the, the boss of the Sthapatya Rachana. Uh, that is the name of his firm. And he practices architecture as well as bamboo architecture predominantly and let us hear from him his ideas and how does he think to rebuild or rethink bamboo as a mainstream material and also bring it into culture through design. I would request uh, uh, you know Hemang to begin with his presentation. Thank you Hemang. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Bhattkari sir, for uh, the wonderful introduction. 
and uh, thank you bamboo society of india and council of architecture uh, to give an opportunity for me to present in front of uh, everybody and uh, thank you karanana it was a wonderful presentation by you i think it gave us a different perspective of looking at bamboo and studio so um, i would start uh, with introducing how i got into bamboo and i was never into bamboo 5 years back and i think yeah so i mostly practice architecture which was rcc uh, brickwork more of a commercial architecture was so a drive towards this bamboo started coming with hospitality and urban projects so for a sustainable future i started explorating uh, ex uh, exploring designs and also the world of bamboo exploration is one of the now criteria which is really triggering me to work and also seniors who has been associated working in bamboo in india and out of india you know they are will really be inspiring as well you know as a student i always visualized you know bamboo as a material to work with but somehow i never got uh, an opportunity as well and and i think uh, dealing with this material was completely a different ball game which everybody was not aware in the nearby area few of them worked but i think they also struggled with the opportunity of working with them they started with a gazebo they started with a small outhouse and and that was in a way not uh, been visualized in a public scenario so me being an urban designer so this journey of dealing with bamboo started uh, in 2018 when i was working for two beach developments uh, in diu india so where there were these infrastructure facilities to be built and uh they had we had these crz rules and we cannot construct with permanent materials permanent um, techniques so this there was all this discussion how the things can be carried on metal structures were uh it needs a lot of treatment and it has a lot of corrosion issues right on the beach so you know they were always thinking and i think we then you know and it was a beautiful journey with a lot of responsibility that turned ways of looking towards architecture and i think as a student always had an inspiration that turned to passion so you know a world of starting with sketches and trying to understand form shapes dealing with bamboo working with bamboo and and that's how we started coming on to how to get into this purity to deal with bamboo mattered me a lot with extreme engineering that made sketches to a strong structure but how was that possible uh so you know working on the beach side was always a challenge was always a challenge for me uh you know because nobody in the area worked with bamboo even the structure designers are not was not really equipped they work with metal structures they work with rcc they work with wood as well but uh getting into this bamboo was really a hard way out but i think with the support of the execution team which was sibart and uh the structure designer you know was nilesh purani and uh nilang liu from lj purani you know they started gaining confidence and they started facing things you know how uh, bamboo can be did so we then the journey from intangible to tangible aspects started you know getting into picture so i've always stayed on a tropical place where the experience of height comes from the 10th floor on the beach side that has a panoramic view of 180 degree in a broad this passion of dealing the beach side structures you know i always had a dream that you know what if the structures were built at height what if the structures 
a large instruction you know in in the shape how would that behave and what would be the experience that yeah so with that you know before targeting for uh, larger ways of dealing with these structures we started understanding how would be the joinery how would be the clustering what would be the system of dealing with bamboo what are the diameters how do we join bamboos to each other what are the principles so that were you know hundreds of you know ideas floating around you know how to deal with this so as an as an architecture office we went to the execution team we came back to office we tried to understand we started studying books we started studying how seniors have worked to this so after all this derivation we started you know preparing schematic sketches schematic you know way of understanding the joineries through 3d's through drawings so there were a lot of background work that went into uh, before we actually start getting practical to it on this side so then what if the cluster of 16 bamboos they start placing the cluster of 3 bamboos how the work the t joins you know how the overlapping works what if the structure is of 16 bamboo cluster how would that behave how heavy it would be to you know pull that structure to a different height so a lot of queries started happening and i think uh, there were great amount of uh, efforts been put in by the office by the architects working with you know us and and also the team the craft the craft person played an important role you know you know for us to ignite the process so likewise the sketching was already into you know picture we started visualizing how the bamboo structures you know how the forms would be how the the surroundings would be what if we started placing uh, those structures on the barren side how would landscape behave you know how would that complement to bamboo structure how would that complement to uh, the views around so i think uh, being an urban designer always wanted to you know place bamboo at urban scale you know why urban scale because that's the very easy medium for people to visualize you know uh, people can see these structures you know we can place these structures you know very well in urban scenario you know where we don't need permission to see these structures you know we started placing on the beach side park where eco friendly approach was prime focus that enlarged the scope of visibility for tourists as well so it was really new material for them also people had queries would bamboo um even the clients had queries you know what is the durability of the material that's a very basic question which are facing to us and uh, how is the strength how would that work what if the cyclone comes uh, how would that behave with the foundation so there were you know many queries you know uh, uh, since five uh, five years we've been working but i think a year we really solved these issues we solved these issues with the structure designers as well and also the craftsmen how would they work with each other we worked on the clarity of joineries so this is i think one of the outcomes of you know uh, we started placing the you know, bamboo as one of the roofing structures for a food stall so this was uh, so the file is so the clarity the geometry placing of the roofings the grids the center over here how would the joining with that would behave how would the clustering happen so we were of course 100% on the drawings to understand and back and forth process was always the part of you know the journey 
taking it to craftsmen, understanding them. Would be they be able to do this or not? How would they do? What clarity that work? Because you know, implementing any of these structures for us, clarity was very important. Joinery details were very important. You know, because that would showcase of how the quality of execution of the design is. You know, no matter how you know beautiful drawings we make, but if that is not executed on the site, you know, that would create a havoc also. because the crafts person was working on a different way of working and we working on a very different notion graphics is really important so in a way how bamboo plays an important role to place the graphics as well with the bamboo structures was really important and i think uh, that clarity of understanding and placing the drawings these schematic drawings the 3ds the extruded views were really important for us before the execution happens you know because what happens is that you know the the craft person the contractors need to understand it really systematically before executing the structure they also need to understand the process of construction as well so we gave them all these views you know in front of them and that made really easy for them to uh, execute these structures in a better way now i think the the of course besides drawing there were more joineries being placed the more members being placed on the site itself so there were these evolutionary uh, process which started happening you know though these structures this is a 6 diameter structure and a 9 meter height uh so from the ground it is almost 11 meters 9 9 yeah so this is how uh bamboo is a very good tensile material but as well it also has that compression to deal with but of course uh, when dealing with these larger structures the structure would become more of a flexible material so we need more of these joineries and these ropes helps them to get into compression and of course the rods the metal rods which has been binded at regular intervals that really helps to you know bamboo to join each other of course there are a lot of other ways and means to you know joining these bamboos with the clusters but i think here the clarity you know even dealing with 75 mm bamboo 100 mm bamboo to 25 mm bamboo and also due to the patting so it is it is a uh, uh, the patti is the the strips which is been peeled out of uh, cutting with the bamboo and every sort of gradation of bamboo is being used here and i think uh, that clarity of the structures the geometry was placed here so that's how uh, the view uh, towards the sea so we wanted to place a deck this is more used with the with the tourists and as well as for the surveillance also from the height when even when the people are swimming or they are enjoying on the beach so we made this structure more as a design oriented here you know of course this beach was also developed by us so we wanted to place that in a very similar language so that this is how you know the human scale it works you know the water when during high tide comes uh till the top of the uh pedestal so the column is been placed on the upside also so here there's a view with our project manager as well so the new trees been planted around that will become backdrop for the landscape and for the these bamboo structures as well of course there are these views which has been envisioned and i think has been properly placed and 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 the uh are the very important you know uh the emotional uh perseverance you know while watching from 6 meter high 4 meter high to the sea you know that really solves the purpose i think the sand over here is also really complementing the color of the bamboo walls and that's how it really departs uh, looking at the water as well, a very blue water 
So then the huge envisioned structure with the dome here, you know, uh, really uh, creates an envisioned view, you know, a very enlarged view of this structure. And I think it's, uh, it looks really beautiful on the photo as well, but when you really visit that structure, you know, the scale you visualize, the scale you place here, you know, uh, that really, you know, uh, steals the show for the BAM. I think the, you know, how beautifully you place bamboo uh, really get onto these, you know, vision of the structure. So, so even the detailings for these strips, the trans, the bit of transparency between this, uh, for the railing here is being kept okay, so that the light enters inside and that's the play between the, the bamboo strip and the light. So, also wanted to emphasize, you know, how these staircase has been done and how the, you know, the textures is being created here. And of course, that this is an open structure. So this is how the flooring is being done. You know, this is a 25 mm bamboo and how precisely it's been placed in very well placed and by overlappings also. Like you see the, the joint, which are overlappings. So the other project uh, on the other beach we did was on the Nagwa beach that's in New India. And that's how we started visualizing the sketch with, uh, so these walls were local stones and been plastered with stone pebbles. So the idea was to get more on the eco-friendly materials. Yeah, of course, uh, Gradually, the idea was being pursued and how the process started is be, become easy. We started placing those materials in a way. So, of course, landscape also played an important role, you know, because if there is landscape behind, the bamboo structure will look more beautiful as well. So, we had a challenge of placing these structures between the existing trees. The light trees, the light colored trees are the existing ones and the dark ones are the proposed trees. So even the, uh, the language of uh, these structures, the entire profile was being envisioned in a way that it looks more near the water area. So when you open showers. So these sections were being prepared and, and with a view that you know how it would envision, you know, these curves, been placed here, you know, that really gets on with the light and air ventilation to the entire structure. Even the structures are open. There's an air ventilation system here, and there's also natural light which is coming here. So that becomes uh, that really helps the structure. So you know that's how these these are local villa stones. The entire construction was done out of it. So that's how the detailing of the bamboo, you know, the roofing structures. You know, getting from the foundation to the roof, I mean, the roofing area. So I think uh, it was been placed in a way that it's been really crafted well. I think uh, besides design, uh, the execution team plays an important role to, you know, place. We had, we had one curve, we had second curve and banding, this arc had a third curve. So initially we wanted to play only with two planes, I mean two curves, but now we, I think we have started exploring three to four types of, you know, curves in a single structure. So yes, of course, uh, this place was cyclone prone, uh, high tides, it's very near to the sea. So high tides is the, is a, one of the biggest issues, water level comes down till here at this level. There were natural, there were trees which we uh, incorporated as part of our design. And this was then uh, afterwards one cut in, in an oval shape into the freedom tree. So that's how the, the backside of the structure looked like. So we faced around uh, 220 km per hour cyclone uh, recently and uh, last year. So I think most of the structures were safe. And I think that's a good news for us. And good news for the bamboo uh, uh, enthusiasts as well, because this structure was one of the very strongest structure that could stand in the 
uh, in the cyclone. We had high tides. We had during the cyclone two years back. We had heavy high tides where you know the structures were really you know that as a structure that really helped us you know to place this. So there were these detailings uh, of the roofing and the cluster of the, you know, the arch beams. So these arch beams were uh, very strong and that were being tied at different intervals. So one thing we realized working with this bamboo that cantilever is a challenge for working with bamboo. That really needs to be strong. You know, and this, this phase of the bamboo becomes more of a flexible phase, you know, a flexible area. So we really need to take care of the edge of the bamboo. Otherwise, till here, the structures are very strong. So this was a cluster of nine. This is how it look, it's looking now between the trees, between the landscape and facing towards the sea. And that's, you know, that's the way of, you know, that's how it's been romantically placed on the beach side. So this is how nightlight behaves. We placed wall flushers on co emphasized columns and the, the, the surface area also of the roof. No, that's how you know uh, you know romanticism with the bamboo that started happening, and I think uh, that's uh, that's the love you know that's been reflected here. So that's the another type of structures. So this is around twelve feet by twelve feet, so around four meters by four meter structure. And uh, the cyclone could not blow this off, and that was a really happy situation. We go, you know. Uh, last year when we got a call from contractor that we may have to you know take these structures you know to up, uh, carry these structures you know two kilometers 200 kilometers away from this place you know because the heavy, the wind is so heavy that our cars are also not able to stand there and i think uh, these structures even the roofings were really safe yes. so this was the photograph during the execution time placing these structures. So this is one of the beach side structures. So uh, yeah, so these are then the foot stalls being completely placed as a foot court area. So there are around 47 stalls, you know, placed here. So then we started placing that in a very curvilinear form. And, you know, Everything that forms are really important when we do it with the bamboo. You know, straight bamboos are straight, but it's it works really well when you band it also. Like that's this is the framework. This is one strong arch beam which has been placed. We wanted to place this as a cantilever structure, but then we started understanding the behavior and from this point, it started becoming flexible. So then we added this support just to hold the structure. But I think after adding the structure, this was completely safe and it was 100% you know, of pure, uh, you know, a working structure there. I think it was really precisely also executed. This arch beam is, sort of a truss which was being developed. So a lot of structural principles are really important to deal with bamboo. And, and that's how, you know, we are very closely working with structural designers because they give us a really good, you know, a principle understanding towards it. Yeah, so that is how. And of course, uh, this is majorly a composite structure in a way that we had RCC also uh, being placed as a foundation for support. But now we are also trying to get into you know, how do we do the foundation out of metal. So that's a new challenge for us. So these are this is how it's looking beside and this is 100% working perfectly on the site. Now these are quite operational. 
it was being inaugurated and fortunately these uh, we were very fortunate that president of india inaugurated last december this this project and i think that really gave a charm to this project and i really respect yeah. so this is how a food stall detailing has been done and yeah placing electrical points so you cannot see any of these pipelines which has been going through so these have been quite concealed in a way and also there was a challenge to put these lights also we don't we don't want to hang it with a lot of wind around so i think uh, the electricians were also really supportive in terms of you know placing it in just so that the bamboo as a structure looks very clear so this was during the execution time how it was been coordinated yeah of course landscape lights they really uh, enhances the view of the bamboo as a structure and and of course and then when this is placed in an urban scenario is been visioned by tourists the people coming from outside and the words have been spreading so fast for this and that's how uh, uh, the intention of you know placing bamboo as a material for architecture and urban and uh, is really impressing the idea so uh, after all then we started so these were the earlier structures this was 4 meter by 4 meter the earlier uh, toilet structures were uh, i think it was the span of 8 meters so then with we got an opportunity to uh, design uh, a meditation hall out of 50 feet by 120 feet structure so it was very the span was very new to us and and i think uh the, we were in very tense situation uh until the first truss was placed on the on the columns so these are basically truss columns and that is how the truss is been placed here and this was in a way very successful of course there were very uh, uh there were many corrections been done afterwards also so this is how it was placed you know one at a time and then been joined horizontally as well so after that we started adding these as you know, the structural elements and i think in yeah so this is how it's been framed again but one thing we realized we noticed that when we have these joineries it becomes very difficult for structure to retain if if this structure could have a curve here then this structure could have been very stable as well so we as a firm we believe that you know dealing with bamboo structures curves are really important banding is really important because then it becomes a very unified structure you know if this is one structure then this becomes one unified element this becomes one unified element so that really helps the the structure stability you know to place as a scenario so then uh, there are these projects which are working on the resorts so where uh, parametric that came into picture you know how do we place this this is the reception area this is the restaurant area this is how the massing of the restaurant the sections would behave in this way so these are one of the proposals we are working on right now so uh, so this is the restaurant so then the entire notion of curves has started placing the entire building and i think visually also this is really pleasing and the energy that these buildings you know they float into people's mind is marvelous then we started going vertical as well so let how you know the outhouses for one of the clients we are designing and this is how the structure could start floating so the interiors of somehow so i think this is the design team 
you know, uh, including structural designers, architects, and the senior draftsperson and the project managers working with us. Yes, and please feel free to discuss. And if you have any more queries, you can, uh, of course, email me to on my email ID. Yeah, if anybody has question, I'll be happy to answer. There are quite a large number of chats which have come in you know, on the chat box. Okay. Yeah, let's see okay. to them. Yeah. Can you read well, this thing among yourself, the, the chats? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. So it says, I think, Sanata Startup. Yeah. So uh, just wanted to know, like, where can we get 5mm, 10mm thing? Yeah, I think you have to uh, contact the uh, the suppliers in Assam and their Goa also, which have been available. And uh, yes, so so there's the other question by Purushottam. The question, uh, what are the good variety grown and available? I think horticulture is not the best person to ask them. I only design and take, you know, um, work with uh, execution team. So they get sorted out all these type of bamboos. They're very experienced with it. Yes. Yeah, I think. Uh, Himan, there could be questions. I you know I'm very sure. But what I would like to uh, say here is that, you know, you really took us on a beautiful nice journey your your own journey you took you know right and, and ventured into this particular field of bamboo architecture friends um, uh, it was really interesting to learn from him as to how did he get into that how did he understand the material how did he interpret the things and then learning the technique techniques you know for example uh, what, which type of bamboo, what size of bamboo, which type of species of bamboo, how to tie them up together, how to bring them together, the heights, the bucklings, the tie, you know, the foundation, everything was an experiment for himself when he began. You know? And he has really come out with beautiful uh, solutions uh, to the design issues which he dealt with. And uh, he also showed us a few of the upcoming projects he is dealing presently. Right. With, with this, I'm sure that Hemang, you have you bear a potential to become a you know a bamboo architect of tomorrow. We are very proud of you, and you know your these uh, clippings and your this presentation videos really made us understand as to how keen you are always to learn the things by yourself, put them into experimentation, and try to try to. Battery running out low. Okay, anyway. So, friends, we are very happy and very indeed uh, fortunate to listen to these two very distinguished speakers today. Um, I'm sure that this was definitely a good treat to all of us uh, in learning bamboo more and more. And with this, I'm sure that a day will come when all of us will talk the same language, we will talk the same. Uh, you know, uh, word vocabularies, and we take up our this particular dream of bringing bamboo into the mainstream construction. And uh, with this hope, with these views, uh, with the, I thank once again to all the participants, the uh, you know the officials from the headquarters, our own team members, and all those who really participated in this thing. Uh, uh, thanking you once again and we wish that in on the next third Saturday of the next month, May, we would come out with the same theme, Rethinking Bamboo in uh, Culture through design and we will come with the engineering uh, issues and engineering solutions, engineering design issues uh, of Bamboo. With this, I thank once again and uh, goodbye to you. Good day. Thank you. Thank you, Vilkarisa.